Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are this morning's headlines. Vasundra Raji firefights claims by Lalit Modi that she helped him secure immigration to the UK. She is likely to meet Amit Shah in Delhi to clarify her position. India seeks enhanced security cooperation with Myanmar NSA Ajit Dawal to meet Myanmar President over crackdown on insurgents in the eastern borders. Greece says it hopes to reach an agreement with creditors over its debt crisis as crucial Eurogroup meeting is slated today. Country unlikely to meet deadline to repay debt by end of this month. Nearly 50 people killed and many injured as car bombs ripped through Shiite mosques and offices in Yemen's capital Sana'a, the Islamic State claims responsibility. And India to take on Bangladesh in the first match of the three-match ODI series in Mirpur, Dhoni is back at the helm to lead the men in blue. Well, first up in the bulletin this morning, the Lalit Modi saga refuses to die down. After Shishma Swaraj, now the opposition is demanding Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje's resignation following claims by the former IPL boss of helping him secure immigration to the UK. Raje is expected to meet the BJP President Amit Shah to clarify her stand. Here's a report. Stung by the claims made by former IPL boss Lalit Modi, Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje is doing some firefighting herself. Modi has alleged that Raje helped him secure an immigration to the UK when she was leader of the opposition in Rajasthan. The allegation has been refuted by the chief minister. But she has now sought an appointment with the BJP president to clarify her position on the controversy. Raje is likely to meet Amit Shah today. The opposition congress in the state is gearing up to begin protests demanding her resignation. Meanwhile, the Congress continues to target External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj, who is in the middle of the controversy for helping Lalit Modi secure travel documents. The party now wants the government to release the letters exchanged between then Finance Minister Chidambaram and the UK's Chancellor of Exchequer, George Osborne, in which Chidambaram has asked for Lalit Modi to be sent back to India. Chidambaram says this will confirm that the UPA in no way facilitated any documents for Modi. Why is the government despite repeated demands not releasing the letters exchanged between the Finance Minister of India and the Chancellor of Exchequer UK. The BJP has backed Sushma saying that the help she extended to Modi was on humanitarian grounds. होना ये चाहिए कि इस प्रकार के काम को जहां पर ललित मोदी की बात नहीं करता पर उनकी पत्नी को जब सुषमा जी ने रिकमेंड किया जाने के लिए तो इतनी संवेदनाएं तो होना चाहिए हमें और वे Meanwhile, the Enforcement Directorate has stepped up its probe into a foreign exchange violation case against Lalit Modi. This involves alleged illegal routing of Rs 21 crore funds from a Mauritius-based company. The ED had begun investigations into this case in October last year after it detected some foreign investment coming into this group which had Modi's relatives at the helm. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, joining me on the phone line is our correspondent Vishal Daya this morning. Vishal, as far as the entire controversy is concerned, of course, Lalit Modi has drawn in uh, Vasundra Raji's name into the picture as well. But as far as the issue is concerned, what is Vasundra Raji's defence? Well, uh, Frank, uh, there are uh, various uh, angles to this particular uh, story and... Uh, you know, uh, both political parties, BJP and Congress out here, are using those specific angles against each other. Now, uh, the revelations uh, by Lalit Modi with respect to Vasundra Raje uh, seems to have uh, hit the Rajasthan chief minister really hard at this point in time. And uh, this was pretty evident uh, from uh, the swift reaction from her side and uh, her proposed plan uh, to be in the national capital today and explain her stand uh, to the BJP president. But, uh, you know, uh, many uh, in the ruling party believe that uh, this might have been done by Lalit Modi to try and, uh, you know, uh, uh, take away some attention from uh, the External Affairs Minister Shishma Shuraj, who uh, initially was at the centre of this entire controversy. Though the opposition is uh, uh, 
you know, uh, he seems to be laughing all the way uh, to the streets uh, uh, when it is uh, going to go ahead and uh, corner the Rajasthan chief minister as well. That's what we see when uh, the senior leaders of the Congress party from uh, the Rajasthan unit, the PCC chief, the CLP leader, the general secretary in charge, all of them addressing a press conference here. And uh, they will now go ahead and protest uh, in the state as well. So obviously... This controversy seems to be uh, very far away from uh, uh, being wrapped up as of now. And uh, since there are conflicting views uh, within the ruling party itself, though, on, uh, on record, uh, they are speaking in one voice. But then, uh, uh, given the fact that uh, not many uh, leaders named in this uh, uh, are uh, known to be getting along with, with each other will ensure that uh, you know uh, they, they, this this controversy doesn't uh, die down so easily. So we'll see more twists and turns in this case. But as of now, all eyes will be on what exactly transpires between uh, the Rajasthan Chief Minister and her party president Amit Shah today when she lands in Delhi. Well, on the Congress's part, Vishal, you've seen that the Congress is tightening the screws around both Shushma Swaraj and Vasundra Rajay. The Congress has been vehemently demanding that both of them step down. But uh, we've seen the BJP and several senior leaders of the party, in fact, all of them coming out and supporting Shushma Swaraj. Is the same kind of support being extended to Vasundra Rajay? Well, not interestingly, and uh, 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 Frank, uh, this is a very... Uh, uh, you know, going to be a, a very interesting angle to the story from now onwards because uh, you, uh, as you pointed out, uh, when Shishma Shura's name uh, uh, was, was uh, you know, uh, came out first, uh, uh, all the senior leaders of the BJP and uh, senior ministers of the government uh, and uh, later on, uh, after a day or two, even the finance minister also, uh, you know, came, came out in support of uh, uh, the external affairs minister. But it, is, it has been almost uh, more than 24 hours uh, since uh, Lalit Modi has dragged in uh, the Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Rajay into this entire episode, but we have not seen, uh, you know, uh, emphatic statements coming out from the senior leaders of the BJP. It seems uh, that uh, if at all, uh, you know, uh, the Rajasthan Chief Minister is not successful in, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, convincing uh, the party president uh, in today's uh, meeting, then uh, things might be a little difficult from here on for her. All right, Vishal, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us there with all those details. Remains to be seen, of course, what's going to happen at that meeting. We'll bring you up to date with what comes out of that meeting as well as the day progresses. Moving on now, of course, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, who is in the US on a 10-day trip, will be addressing portfolio managers from FIIs as well as executives of US companies operational in India, comprising banks, insurance and pension funds in New York. During his visit, the finance minister will address the Columbia School of Business. He will also meet about 150 members of the Council for Foreign Relations, CFR, and would highlight about likely prospects of the Indian economy, investment opportunities in India, and development of infrastructure, among others. He will also hold meetings with the management of the New York Stock Exchange and select top CEOs of U.S. financial companies, in the latter part of his visit, Jaitley will address the celebrations organized to mark the occasion of the International Day of Yoga on June 21st in San Francisco. He will also speak on India's economic future at an event organized by the Stanford Institute of Economic Policy Research. The finance minister will be back in India on June 25th. Let's take a look now at what's lined up for the day in our segment, The Day Ahead. A court in Maharashtra will start the hearing in the J. Day murder case of 2011. The court had framed charges against 10 accused in the case, accusing them of being part of the underworld gang run by fugitive gangster Chota Rajan. Day, a senior journalist with Midday, was shot dead in suburban Powai on June 11, 2011 by assailants who followed him on motorcycles. India's largest telecom service provider, Bharti Airtel, will start trials of its 4G services in Delhi from today. Sources say that the company has set up the network and already informed the customers having 4G-enabled handsets to get 4G SIM cards. The company had started its 4G services in 2012 with the first launch in Kolkata. The last rites of famous architect Charles Correa will be performed in Mumbai today. The veteran architect passed away on Tuesday night after 
a brief illness korea played a defining role in developing architecture of post independence india he was honored with the padma shri in 1972 and the padma vibhushan in 2006 Chinese state councillor Yang Jiechi, one of uh, China's top foreign policy advisers, is heading to Vietnam to co-host an annual diplomatic meeting with Vietnam's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Pham Binh Minh today. It will be the highest level bilateral meeting between China and Vietnam since the two countries began butting heads over the placement of a Chinese oil rig in the South China Sea. It's time for a short break now, but still to come. India seeks further cooperation from its eastern neighbour Myanmar to tackle insurgency. NSA Ajit Dawal meets up Myanmar's President. That and much more on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Very warm welcome to a brand new edition of World Panorama with me, Frank Pereira. Barack Obama has been elected on the basis that I will no longer take America into wars, and in fact, quite the opposite, I will pull America out of wars. According to the Indian government, fishermen are not, well, not at fault. The U.S. intervention in Iraq set the stage. for exacerbation of these conflict and then the intervention in Syria watch world panorama at these times on rajya sabha television Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Aam Aadmi Party seems to be sinking deeper into controversies with the Delhi Police deciding to file charge sheets against 21 of its MLAs in 25 different cases. The party, however, claims that it is a conspiracy against it and it is a bid to divert attention away from real issues. Yes, ma'am. Delhi Police is filing charge sheets against 21 MLAs of the Aam Aadmi Party in various cases. Out of the 25 cases in which charge sheets will be filed, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has been named in six. Besides the Chief Minister, Deputy CM Manish Sisodia, Par Minister Satyendra Jain, and MLAs Ram Nivas Goel, Somnath Bharti, and Jarnail Singh will have charge sheets against their names. The kind of cases are also varied. There is one pertaining to fraud and one for misbehaving with a woman. उद्देश्य ये है कि जल्दी से जल्दी इन्वेस्टिगेशन की जाए इन्वेस्टिगेशन में जो भी फैक्ट्स सामने आते हैं उन फैक्ट्स को मद्देनजर रखते हुए जो भी हमें कोर्ट के सामने रिपोर्ट पेश करनी है वो हम रिपोर्ट पेश करें द पार्टी हैज कॉल्ड इट पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ रिवेंज आम आदमी पार्टी की सरकार बनने के बाद पूरे देश में ये माहौल बनाने की कोशिश मोदी जी की पुलिस और मोदी जी ये कर रहे हैं कि सारे अपराधी हिंदुस्तान के आम आदमी पार्टी में आ गए हमारे इक्कीस विधायक ऐसे हो गए जिनके कारण पूरे देश में आतंक की स्थिति पैदा हो गई ऐसा न करें मैं उनसे निवेदन करना चाहता हूं कानून के मुताबिक काम करें हाउएवर दी ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज हैव क्रिटिसाइज द दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट फॉर द मेनी केसेस अगेंस्ट इट्स लीडर्स पब्लिक लाइफ में आकर अगर आप मुकदमों से डरो फिर आप पब्लिक लाइफ में आओ मत और वो इस बात को अगर उनका कोई शेड्यूल होगा कोई टाइम फ्रेम ऐसा होगा जिसमें उसमें उनके खिलाफ मुकदमे बनने तो बनेंगे उसमें किसी से खबर भड़काने के लिए नहीं है कभी भी कोई केस हुआ है आम आदमी पार्टी ने किसी न किसी के ऊपर तोहमत मन दी है कांग्रेस के ऊपर या बीजेपी पे या किसी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी पे और ये तोहमतें लगाने का एक कारोबार शुरू कर रखा द पुलिस इस डिसीजन इज लाइकली टू इंक्रीज द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ द आम आदमी पार्टी ऑलरेडी ग्रैपलिंग विद फेक डिग्री केस एंड वन ऑफ डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस अगेंस्ट टू ऑफ इट्स लीडर्स विद इनपुट फ्रॉम रविन्द्र सिंह शोरान एंड अनु दीवान ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी There's a look at what else is making news across the country in our segment nationwide. Continuing their protest against the delay in implementation of one rank one pension, ex-servicemen have decided to hold a huge rally in the poll-bound states. Assembly polls in Bihar are likely to be held in September October this year, followed by election in Punjab stated next year. The groups of ex-servicemen are on a really hunger strike in about 20 cities across the country. 
Delhi Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung's office has written to the center urging it to exempt Delhi Home Secretary Dharampal from going to the US as his presence here is being perceived as absolutely essential. The moves come amid a typical situation at the Delhi Secretariat where two Home Secretaries have been functioning out of the same premises. Pal was transferred by the Arvind Kejriwal government from the post of Home Secretary and placed at the disposal of the Home Ministry, a move that the centre has termed void. The state government will amend Section 1 of the Maharashtra Rajya Bhasha Act of 1964 to remove the existing ambiguity and clearly mention Marathi as the official language. The State Education Minister Vinod Taure said that the amendment will be moved in the forthcoming monsoon session of state legislature in July. Well, the Andhra Pradesh government has announced that it will perform the foundation stone laying ceremony of the new state capital Amravati in Guntur district on October 22nd. Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with his counterparts from Singapore and Japan will also be invited for the event. Moving on now, India has urged security cooperation in Myanmar days after army carried out a counter-insurgency offensive along the Indo-Myanmar border. National Security Advisor Rajit Dawal held talks with Myanmar President Yu Thien Sen and top defence brass yesterday. The meetings were also attended by Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar. Dawal has been closely involved in planning the June 9th operation in which India invoked the May 2014 border agreement with Myanmar, which provides for a framework for security cooperation and exchange of information between security agencies of the countries. Moving on to some international news now. Four blasts rocked the Yemeni capital of Sana'a on Wednesday, killing at least 50 and injuring many others. The Islamic State militant group claimed responsibility of the multiple attacks, even as peace talks are underway in Geneva. Scenes of devastation in Sana'a as four car bombs ripped through Yemen's capital on Wednesday. Causing at least 50 casualties and several more injuries, the car bombs were part of a coordinated attack claimed by the Islamic State. The eye struck near three mosques and the headquarters of the Houthi group in Sana'a. Witnesses recall the chaos when the bombs went off. The attacks come even as delegates from Yemen took the first steps towards resolving the crisis. Peace talks are underway in Geneva between Yemeni political parties, including the Irani-backed Houthis, and representatives of the exiled president Mansour Hadi's government. After repeated delays and a rocky start, the UN-sponsored peace talks are finally showing signs of progress. But Yemen is still wary of achieving any real outcome. أفعالهم وأقوالهم هنا منذ وصولهم إلى جنيف لا تنم على أي حسن نية لديهم ولا عن أي رغبة حقيقية من أجل الوصول إلى حل حقيقي. Now we are in a good I can't tell that and now we started in a good way and now uh, we started in things which it probably which things uh, will maybe will be in the first step to uh, finish things. It is the important start towards the return to a political process, let us be realistic. It will be a difficult path. But the important issue is that we start addressing the crisis in all its dimension of determination and willingness, and that we start doing this now here in Geneva. The discussions are aimed at ending nearly three months of war that has plunged the country into a humanitarian crisis. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Well, it's time now for a quick break, but still to come. Hong Kong protests continue alongside debate on a new electoral package. That and other international news on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
counting back centuries. A cultural heritage that inspires and warms at once. Magic that awes, Rajya Sabha Television brings you events that embrace the wonders of India's classical arts. Conversations with the biggest names in the culture and music. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, Greece faces exit from the EU ahead of the crucial Eurogroup meeting today in Luxembourg. The Greek finance minister has said that the meeting could set the scene for a deal with its creditors. However, there are appre apprehensions whether Greece will be able to repay debt before the deadline ends this month. Here's a report. Thousands of Greeks stood firmly behind their Prime Minister in the deadlock reforms for cash negotiations one day before the crucial Eurogroup meeting. This might be the last chance for Greece to stop sliding into default and leave the Euro. While there are reports that contingency plans are being kept ready, Greece's main negotiator said that Athens doesn't have the cash to repay the IMF before the June 30th deadline. However, Greece's finance minister feels the meeting could set the tone for a deal with the creditors. Tomorrow, we will uh, set the scene for what we consider to be our political and moral duty, and that is to reach an agreement very, very quickly with our partners and the institutions. At, at the moment, we haven't got the money to... to we have, we've been paying, as you know, uh, all our obligations up to, to now from our own resources. We've been squeezing every last bit of drop of liquidity that there is uh, available, which it, parenthetically, I can say, is shows our commitment to the deal. Why would we have done that if we didn't believe a deal uh, was possible? Meanwhile, the European Union defended the Greek debt deal proposals. EU said that it was now up to Athens to propose alternative budget remedies. Ce que nous faisons, c'est simplement des propositions raisonnables, des propositions modérées, des propositions réalistes pour que les réformes le soient aussi. La balle est dans le camp des autorités grecques. En effet, nous n'allons pas engager de négociations préalables à l'Eurogroupe. C'est à l'Eurogroupe que tout cela se discutera. Mais il faut être conscient maintenant que nous avons peu de temps. The European Commission, the European Central Bank and the IMF could extend fresh finance for Greece but are insisting on reform and further austerity measures. However, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has ruled out further pension cuts or hike in taxation. All eyes will now be on the meeting today to find out if Greece can buy some more time or quit Euro. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Some more international news now. Hong Kong legislators uh, began a debate on a Beijing-backed electoral reform proposal on Wednesday as hundreds gathered outside government buildings in protest. The government says that the plan has earned the support of majority of the people, but the opposition is demanding for larger rights to vote for the next leader of Hong Kong in 2017. Tensions ran high between demonstrators in Hong Kong as lawmakers debate the new electoral reforms package. Legislators began the debate on Wednesday that will allow a direct vote for Hong Kong's next leader in 2017, but only from pre-screened pro-Beijing candidates. There were heated discussions on the matter ahead of the contentious vote expected by the end of this week. Pro-democracy legislators looked determined to vote down the proposal, which could result in a stalemate but the government claims it has the public support. The government has been critical of the pro-democracy protest across Hong Kong last year and now since a week before the crucial vote, 
saying it is only dividing the society. The Chinese Communist Party, you may say that uh, we are fighting with a giant. So it may take us some time to, uh, to convince the giant that uh, uh, there's no more value of this kind of fight. Just give us democracy and things may be good to both sides. China assured it will honor its promise of universal suffrage and expressed hope that the motion would pass. 那么基本法和全国人大常委会八三幺的决定呢，它确立了行政长官普选制度，在保持稳定性的同时，从长远看也将根据香港的实际情况，在实践中进一步完善。While flawed, the package is still the most progressive electoral model ever offered by China's leaders in what might be a pilot for other cities within mainland China. But if the plan is vetoed. Hong Kong's next leader will be selected as before by a 1,200-member committee stacked with pro-Beijing loyalists. Bureau Report, Rajasthan TV. There's a look now at what else is making news across the globe in our world wrap. Egypt reopened a major downtown Cairo metro station on Wednesday after a two-year closure, signaling government confidence in the security situation. Located below Tehrir Square, a symbol of the popular uprising that toppled veteran leader Hosni Mubarak in 2011, Sadat Metro Station is one of only two stations linking the network's two main lines. Authorities had shut the station in August 2013 when supporters of former Islamist President Mohamed Morsi were shot dead at two Cairo protest camps. The United States called for a greater commitment from Iraq's government in the fight against Islamic State as it lamented Baghdad's failure to deliver enough soldiers for training and underscored the need to empower Sunni tribesmen. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter told a congressional hearing that the U.S. military had hoped to train 24,000 Iraqi security forces by this fall but had only received enough recruits to train about 9,000 so far. The United States sees training Sunni fighters who would be subordinate to Baghdad as crucial to their strategy. Faction-ridden Sri Lanka Freedom Party, led by President Maitripala Sirisena, has set up a six-member committee to resume the dialogue with former President Mahinda Rajapakshe in a bid to keep the party united. At a meeting of SLFP members held on Wednesday, President Sirisena stressed the need to keep the party united and instructed the members not to let the party divide on the issue of Rajapakshe's return. Since his defeat to Sirisena in January polls, Rajapakshe has been holding nationwide rallies wanting to make a comeback. The torrential rains made a surprise visit to most parts of China, causing severe damage to infrastructure and disrupted road traffic in many cities and regions. In Yingshan County of central China's Hubei province, downpour since Wednesday morning led to severe flooding in swathes of crops, fields and some neighborhoods. Heavy rain also triggered landslides along several roads in the country. Almost after three decades, Iran laid its 175 military divers to rest. The divers were captured during the 1980 and 1988 war with Iraq. Emotional crowds packed the capital streets to commemorate the divers and other soldiers killed during the war. The divers laid to rest were taken prisoner in 1986 during an Iranian attempt to seize Basra. Iraq repelled the attack and thousands were killed on both sides. Moving on to some sports news now, India will take on Bangladesh in the first one-day match of the three-match series at the Shere Bangla National Stadium today. With captain Mahindra Singh Dhoni back at the helm along with six other ODI specialists, it will be a fresh beginning for a full-strength Indian squad after the World Cup semi-final exit. But even a 3-0 result against the hosts will not be enough for the second-place side to claim the number one spot in the ICC rankings. While a favourable outcome for Bangladesh will boost its qualifying chances for the 2017 Champions Trophy. That's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a nice day.